And we are back, continuing our live coverage from Black Hat USA 2023 here at Mandalay Bay. And it's my pleasure to be joined by with uh, Antonio Sanchez. I can't seem to talk today. <laughs> so you're the principal evangelist at Fortra. Glad to have you here. And um, let me just dive right in because one of the subjects that's really near and dear to my heart is vulnerability management because I've been in one way or another writing about it or editing about it or researching about it for the better part of 20 years. And for all of our advancements over the years, it continues to be a moving target. So my question for you is, why is vulnerability management mm -hmm. such a challenge particularly in today's climate. Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me today. Um, yeah, vulnerability management has been around a long, long time. And even though it's been around a long time, you'd figure by now we would get it right or get it pretty well, pretty close to being right. But it is a moving target. And it's it's it goes back to the threat landscape. I'm sure you've seen this. It is by far just changing so fast and so rapidly. There's the, the, the footprint today is much different than what it was 20 years ago with with the rapid adoption of the cloud. And every time you put your workloads out in other places, you have a whole new set of vulnerabilities to to think about and then there's always the new vectors the new things that we hadn't thought about that nobody really thought about until they became a thing so there's always going to be vulnerabilities there's always going to be software that's going to be created software mm -hmm. inherently is going to have some bugs you can't create perfect code it's just not possible but everywhere you turn there's always going to be some sort of vulnerability something out there and then the hard part is because of the volume of vulnerabilities it's impossible to get to everything yep. so you've got to make some decisions what can i get to what can my staff get to that's going to make the biggest impact because i'm not going to get to all thousand that i found this week yeah you know i make i'm going to get to a fraction of those and then there's going to be another thousand next week what's most important in your environment in terms of exactly. criticality is not the same as right. any number of other environments it, exactly and it's different for everybody yeah. it's different because what what's important to you may not necessarily be important to me and people need to i think that's kind of you know when vulnerability management started it was mostly vulnerability scanning mm -hmm. you know and it was vulnerability scanning for trying to find you know all the things to patch well then we get into okay well i can't patch everything so what are the highest uh the, the most critical things i should worry about patching okay well sometimes the most critical things that you have may not necessarily uh, uh be a a critical asset that you need to patch so it goes back to understanding what do i have in my environment what's important to me and then from what i find you know this is where some of the intelligence comes in and why vulnerability that's evolved from being scanning to management to even assessments is putting some intelligence behind what are the things that matter to my business? What are the business drivers? What are the growth drivers? How are people handling data? Um, how's data coming in? How do we make money? Um, and then making decisions based on, okay, based on these assets, these assets are critical for us. So anything that comes up, we have to prioritize with this. Um, and at the end of the day, you want to focus your resources that are on the things that are going to make the biggest impact for for your organization. And it's as true now as it was 20 years ago, as it will be 5, 10, 15 years ago, because there's always going to be that next thing. Yeah. Now, in following you and Fortra, I've heard you talk elsewhere about the importance of thinking like a threat actor. Mm -hmm. Spend a couple minutes now talking me through what that looks like. So, you know, so you've heard the phrase, you know, layers of defense and yep. and and ensuring that you have multiple security controls across the organization, across the kill chain. And too often times what we find is organizations things I've got all of my security controls I'm doing actively reducing my footprint um, but sometimes what they don't think about is okay how would I attack me or how would somebody attack me and if they attacked me what could they do how would they get in 
And once they're in, what are the things they can do? Where can they move laterally? Can they get to the crown jewels of my organization or not? And so when we say thinking like a threat actor, it's being able to track the tactics, techniques, and the procedures, the TTPs on what is it that the threat actors are doing? Because the threat actors are always evolving. For every innovation that comes out to improve the efficacy of security, the threat actors are using them as well to figure out how can they implement that in with their attacks. So thinking like a threat actor is is just that is if somebody if an adversary was to get in um, what could they do and what could they get to and how detrimental and how critical would that be for our organization so can you talk about can you give an example of a case where you helped a mm -hmm. client address these issues sure. and harden their defenses and restructure using Fortra. Mm -hmm. um, can you give an example of a case where you did that and what it looked like? So, so one of them that comes to mind, so we were working with a, a national manufacturing organization. Mm -hmm. Their mature practices, they do internal penetration testing, um, but as part of their security program, they also once a year uh, bring in a third party mm -hmm. to do their uh, their own penetration testing. So a year ago, when they did it, they didn't. They, they had another company did it, and they fared actually pretty pretty well with whatever third party they used the year prior. So this year they used uh, they used Fortra, which within we had within our portfolio, it's the the product is called uh, Core Impact, a service that we provide for customers. So this was the first time that they contracted us to do the pen testing for them and see what would happen. Our, our pen testing team, our, our team that did the pen testing were, was able to harvest about 900 credentials, many of them uh, admin credentials. It was to the point where they could have literally taken over the manufacturing company's entire domain. So you can imagine once you know, their jaw dropped, you know, metaphorically, and once they realized like, oh my gosh, this is both very scary, but at the same time, it was eye-opening. I said, well, I'm glad that you know, they did that in a safe environment, being us doing it for them, because this way they could figure out exactly what they needed to do to harden that environment, because we provided them the report of, this is how we get, got in, this is how we got the first set of credentials, then this is how we moved laterally, then this is we got other credentials, and, and the different steps along the way, so that this gave the organization the opportunity to understand, okay, this is what we need to do to harden this environment, this is what we need to do to update this configuration, this is what we need to do to update permissions, and so on and so forth to reduce that, because had that happened, and an adversary have done that, I mean, it literally would have put them out of business having their entire domain taken down. Yeah. So with vendor consolidation at the top of many a CISO's mind these days, um, that's what comes up repeatedly as I talk to CISOs. What can Fortra do to help mature? And I, some of this you've already described, mm -hmm. but this is to really tie it all together. Um, what can Fortra do to help mature organization security programs? Sure. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's being able to stitch and integrate the solutions together and to become a force multiplier for the organizations. Because the organizations, the, the talent shortage isn't going away anytime soon. So the products, the tools have to do more. And the whole what we've been hearing, and I'm sure you've been hearing it as well, is Customers buy best of breed of everything, but then they're left figuring out how to stitch everything together. And in the end, they only end up using five to 10% of the capacity of multiple tools. So what we've done with our portfolio is we've purchased uh, several uh, several companies and their intellectual property, and we've integrated. Uh, we're integrating all the places where it makes sense to integrate, to make it easier for the customers to deploy, to make it easier to manage, to make it easier to be able to solve some difficult, complex use cases Cases, and that's the strategy that we're going to continue moving forward is integrate, do the integration, do the stitching for the customer. So wherever they are within their security maturity, we have something that can help them along the way. Because as you know, security is not a, not a destination. It's, it's a journey. So yep. we want to be, we, we say we want to be their security ally and you know, we're, we're, 
that's what we want to be is we want to help you on that journey. Let us be one of your allies, one of your partners on that journey with the breadth of portfolio and the integrations. Let us do the, the, the hard part, which is stitching, stitching these solutions together to solve those complex use cases. Excellent. So that was great. Thank you. Um, I wish you lots of success this week in your discussions. And um, we will be back. Great, thank you for having me.